What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another MLB showdown with Hold the Door DFS. Uh, I am really pumped today. I'm actually going to do uh, start out with a lineup study on both the slates that are going on currently that are still live on DraftKings as I'm recording. I just want to take a look at uh, players like McLovin. Uh, I think Colin Bennett is in one of the uh, high stakes uh, single entry. So I, I like to, a lot of times they run their same cash lineup in a single entry, like 11 man uh, GPP. So let's just take a look there. And then, um, then we'll get into our three slates. So uh, hopefully you guys were able to, uh, you know, we had a drawing on our Twitter account today for a, a free week, a VIP week. Uh, and we gave that out to a lucky person. So be on the lookout on our Twitter account. Uh, make sure you're following me and following our FSI Twitter handle for all those awesome deals. All right, so let's get into our screen share here. Um, the first slate we're going to look at is actually the one that's currently going on right now. And I kind of felt like the whole slate was really based on Trout or, you know, taking Dunn, uh, the second pitcher for, um, or the second pitcher on the slate that you would be considering. Um, and it, just by the looks of it here, you know, like McLovin did not run double pitcher here. You know, Heaney was super chalky in the captain spot, which should be the case for someone like him in this matchup. Um, you know, 72% owned, 72% er, uh, captain, 90% owned. Um, they, Colin Bennett and McLovin ran the same line, did not use the second pitcher, um, used Mike Trout, who was also very popular. Um, but was, if we look up here, uh, Dunn was 36% owned. Uh, only scored 4.35. I think he's done, or he might be out on the mound, maybe four more, one more inning. But um, that's just the thing. I, like, so you're deciding to pick between these two, and, and he actually ran all three and then just used that last punt again. But, um, you know, there's a good chance Trout outscores done here. So I just think uh, it's interesting to see that really high-stakes players go away from that uh, SP2 in slates where you don't feel like it's really necessary. So now we go to the twin slate, and this is another one that I did think Ponce de Leon was overpriced. Um, Rich Hill, I think, had some – was cheaper, so he was more appealing. But he did have uh, definitely some innings restrictions. He only went five innings. He only threw 60 pitches. Uh, he did get the win. He had two strikeouts. So he did seem to look here, not necessarily optimal at the captain spot, but played really well. Uh, and McLovin had him in the captain spot, but did not play Ponce de Leon. And Ponce de Leon actually had eight strikeouts in three innings. And I don't know if he was used maybe at all in here. I'm just trying to run through to see what he ended with. Um, I mean, that's pretty amazing. Oh, yeah, okay. So he was, yeah, he, he was only one, only one person owned him in this 11 man, $150, $100 uh, single entry GPP. And he outscored, uh, I think he outscored, or was pretty close. Yeah, to outscoring uh, Rich Hill. But again, using a, a hitter in the captain spot is really risky, really risky. Uh, just because similar to or different from other sports, I mean, obviously, if you hit a home run like this, you, you're, you're running circles around your house. But uh, similar or different than other sports, you know, you don't have an implied floor in, in baseball for hitters. Uh, you know, like Trout should never get zero. He always usually gets walked once, but there's a chance he goes over four. You know, there's not a chance that LeBron James shows up on the court and has zero points. So the floors are just way different that way. Um, that's why I think when you're playing uh, at least showdown cash or single entry, uh, using a pitcher when it, they are viable is optimal in cash. You know, even on this slate, like you might have thought, oh, let's put Mike Trout in captain. He could do that. He could do well. You know, but it's unlikely that on most times he's going to outscore the starting pitcher in a really good matchup. And Heaney was cheaper than Trout. So let's move into the first slate. Uh, we have Ryu against Fetty. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce his name, who started a uh, spot start against uh, Yankees, I believe. Uh, pitched four innings, three Ks, 10 points. I mean, I, I, I think that's like his ceiling game probably so nine thousand ten points viable yes i think there is implied risk that he that that doesn't go that well 
again. I think that was like, like I said, probably the best case scenario. Um, but I do think 10 points for a 9K player is definitely viable if you think that he gets there. Um, Ryu, I definitely think you will want to use. I don't think he's on any restrictions. Um, oh, so in his first start, he only went 4.2 innings. But I do think you would see him maybe get a little bit more run this second game. I think he would be one that would be hard to fade in cash because uh, I just think he's a better overall pitcher and you he's viable. So um, as we go down here, uh, we probably want to be targeting Toronto bats more than Washington. Um, Biggio is 9,400. That's pretty expensive. I do like a little bit of discount here. We have on uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. at 8,600. Uh, Hernandez has hit a couple, has hit a, at least one bomb, maybe two. Uh, oh, he had two home runs in one game. Yeah. Um, so I think depending on where he comes out in the lineup, he's viable. Um, Adam, Adam Eaton against the lefty is a little bit less appealing. That's unfortunate because he's a little bit more of a discount. Um, you're still going to see Starlin Castro be pr probably the most popular play on the slate just with where he is priced and where his, um, where he's hitting in the order. Uh, yeah. So this slate, I think is going to kind of come down to mostly the value that comes out in the lineups. Um, you know, like Tellez could be, you know, hitting higher up in the order against a righty. Um, you know, I don't really, I don't want Thames against Ryu, a lefty on lefty. Uh, but I like Vlad, I like Lords, I like Biggio. Um, probably won't get a, I don't know if he's going to, I don't know if Bo's going to play or not. So that's kind of where I'm at in the slate. Probably lock in Ryu, even probably in the captain spot. Decide on Fetty or Fed or however you say his name. Um, if you use him, you know, now you're at 60, 6,100 left per player. Right? If you don't use him and you try to get a Toronto, or a Toronto piece like Vlad Guerrero, now you're at 60, 6,200 left per player. You start to insert in somebody like Starlin Castro. And then now you are sitting in a more comfortable range, 6,500 with three players left. Assuming as we have gotten on most of these slates, there's at least one 4K dead minimum player in the lineup. I'm just going to click one random one. That gives you 7,700 left to work with uh, per player. So that can get you a combination of, you know, if Kendrick is in the lineup who smashes lefties pretty well, Maybe you get Kendrick or, or maybe you go down to Eaton, even just lefty on lefty or Cabrera and then get up to uh, really. So uh, just be on the lookout for the lineups, but I think Ryu captain will be pretty chalky, um, especially that the left, there's more lefties in this lineup for Washington. Uh, so let's move on to the next game. Uh, next game is probably my favorite on the slate just because I love the pitching uh, you Darvish is pretty bad in the first game, but I don't think that you fade him here in at all. I do think I will likely be using Castillo in my captain role and then Darvish uh, as my second play. Pretty tough to get away from the strikeout upside there for both of them. Um, again, we'll have to find some value here uh, because we're at 6,300 left per player. I think Freddie Galvis could be in the lineup. Um, Nick Senzel. Has he been playing? He's been, uh, yeah, hit him. He played a couple games. Um, otherwise, I like Moustakis. I think he's way too cheap at 7,400. Um, Castellanos. Uh, who else was I looking at here? Irvin could make a lineup here and there. Tucker Barnhart might be catching. Almora Jr. tends to make the lineup randomly with no real reason. Tyler Stevenson playing catcher. Yeah, so the options down there, we're going to have to really see when they come out. Horner, if he, play, if he starts. But don't prioritize the hitters, okay? So when, when, the, when the hitters come out, take the value, probably the best, the highest hitting guy in the order at the cheapest price, and then try at, at the end try to get you know, one or two decent hitters in that Moustakis, Hayward. Hayward is viable too. Hayward, uh, lefty and ready, platoon split or platoon advantage. I like him there too. So that's where I'm at. This is my favorite slate of the day. Uh, I can't really fill in all the gaps yet until I get my value in hitting. And we're just seeing so much rotation with, uh, 
the short amount of time and all these things. So I expect um, this lineup to come up really nice and it would be really popular to have these two guys uh, locked in, especially in cash. So that's why when I say I try to use, um, if you have not seen my video on trying to find uh, inexperienced head-to-head -head opponents, uh, that would be one telling tale on a slate like that if you found somebody that did not use both of them and or not using one of them in the captain role. Um, so that's where I think we see you would see an advantage if you do a block and post or if you just pick up some fish, some people that post way too early that don't have a badge. Uh, the last slate of the night, lock in uh, Lamet at your captain role. I think that's just going to be too easy to do. You want to do that. He has strikeout upside and he's playing and he's pitching against the Giants. Um, Tyler Anderson is uh, listed as the opener, um, which obviously at 9,200 is an absolute fade. So uh, make sure he is not in your lineups. Don't be fooled by that potential opener. Now, uh, the gas man, Kevin Gosman, um, he came in relief, uh, did four innings. You know, I, I don't know. You know, I guess depending on whenever he comes into the game, he has a potential to get a win. So at 7,600, that will be a slate decider. But the reason that it makes me think that he is definitely viable here a couple of reasons. Um, the players around him, Grisham won't start likely against the lefty. Uh, I don't want Sandoval. Uh, Profar, maybe. Yeah, I, I guess I do like him against lefties. Will Myers, he'd be viable. Hosmer, probably not playing. Uh, I mean, after that, your options aren't all that great. And if you use, excuse me, if you use him, you can still fill in the gaps here pretty nicely with, you know, even here with Will Myers. And if you went pro far, uh, you get one dead men player or close down here. Then you can jump all the way back up and get somebody like Manny Machado, which is a really nice build. I don't know who that 4K player is going to be. Um, otherwise, obviously, my favorite hitter on the slate is Tatis Jr. But I don't think it's going to be that easy. I mean, you could definitely play these two. And if you get two guys that are in the starting lineup that are either under 5K or at that, that dead minimum price tag, then you can definitely make it work. But Tatis Jr. is my favorite hitter on the slate. Um, and that, but that speaks to the price. Uh, I do like Manny Machado uh, as a discounted. I think he's just still too discounted here. Tommy Pham always has nice stolen base plus home run upside. So I think um, deciding on, on, on Kevin Gosman is going to be pivotal on this slate. Um, but there is a lot of unknowns. How long is he going to pitch? Three, four innings. Does he have a chance at a win? Um, the downside is he gives up three runs in those three innings, and now he has zero or negative points. So, um, obviously, he has some strikeout upside. And, and the Padres still have strikeouts in their lineup. Uh, it's just not as prevalent as it was a year or two ago. You know, they have rounded out their lineup pretty nicely. So that's all we're going to do today. Uh, be on the lookout, NHL this Saturday. I will be covering all the premium NHL content at FSI. Uh, we have our NBA content that is going to be fast and furious tomorrow with all the showdown slates, the main slate. Uh, we have an awesome uh, preview out right now. Uh, WNBA has been absolutely crushing it. Uh, Dub Lewis has got videos out every day. Uh, we had a couple guys split uh, – you know, 60 bucks turning into $2,000. It's just awesome. So a lot of great things happening at Fantasy Sports Insight. Uh, be on the lookout for more deals. Uh, give us a follow. Hit a comment. Hit subscribe. Be ready to get this at, uh, information right when it comes out. All right. Thanks a lot. Have a good one.